welcome to my teaching today, uh, Why So Many Names, a teaching on the sacred Hebrew, Hebrew names uh, of God. Uh, make sure you have your Bibles handy because uh, we will be looking up a scripture, so make sure you have it handy. Well, before we get started, let's have a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that each and every person watching this video today is blessed, is refreshed, and strengthened by you through your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Yahushua, I pray. Amen. Well, on your screen is the uh, sacred Hebrew, Hebrew name of our Heavenly Father. Uh, the letters are read, um, Hebrew is read uh, right to left. So let's read the letters, uh, Yohad, Vav, -He. Now the English letters cor corresponding, uh, corresponding with those uh, Hebrew letters is the YHVH. So how can the YHVH produce so many different names of God? I mean, is his name Yahweh? Is his name Yahweh? Is his name Jehovah? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now in this study, we will discuss the debate on the Hebrew letter Vav. Also, we will talk about why sometimes you see a letter J and other times the letter Y in the Father's name. So which one is correct, the Wa or the Vav? Now, the late Professor uh, Ben Zion Netanyahu, uh, which um, he passed away at 102 about a year ago, was the father of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, Professor Ben Zion Netanyahu stated at the Messiah Truth Forum that the earliest Hebrew grammar texts that were produced in the European language were produced in Austria and henceforth were written in German. The Hebrew letter Vav was transliterated by the letter W in those grammar texts because the letter W has the same sound in German as the letter V has in English. Unfortunately, though, the transliteration scheme was overlooked when these grammar books were subsequently translated into English, and consequently the use of the letter W to represent the Hebrew letter Vav was never corrected to the letter V. From this simple oversight has grown the unshakable conviction among, ma among many Christians that the Hebrew letter Vav originally sounded like the English letter W. Because books were written by Jews say so, and how, however many times they are told that this is not the case, they flatly refuse to accept it. So I thought that was an interesting find. I kind of thought maybe that was um, part of the... the the problem that, the, you know, he had the German influence on the language on the, when they did the translations. So that helps us understand why sometimes you see W versus a V in our Heavenly Father's name. That explains Yahweh versus Yahweh. But what about Jehovah? Now, Jehovah, you can find that in the uh, King James Version of the Bible, in Isaiah 12, 2, in Isaiah 26, 4. Um, now, I'm not sure about the other translations that have it, but I do know that the King James definitely does have it there. So if you want to look that up later, you can. Again, the German influence um, on the letter the J. Because in the, in the German uh, language, their alphabet, the, the letter, well, as we call the letter J, but they don't call it the letter J. They call it the letter y Yacht. And the sound, of course, makes as, a, as our, the word yellow. I have two examples there, two German words. Now, the first one is pronounced ya, and not ja, but ya, making the y sound, and yater uh, with the y sound. So, their letter J makes a y sound. Now, on your screen at the top, this is the information if you go to Bible Hub. This is going to be the information that you're going to see at Bible Hub. Now this is 
The father's name in the strong concordance is H3068. And that's this is the information you're going to find at Bible Hub. Now, the, the, the bottom um, row is the information you would find at Blue Letter Bible. Now, you notice this, the, the sound, like at the top one, they have the, the Y, the Y-H-B-H, but they say that the, the that word or that name, they, they say Yahweh. That's what they have there. And then the Blue Letter Bible, pretty much pronounced the same way, as you can see. They actually have, at the Blue Letter Bible, they actually have the name Jehovah there. But as you can see here, it's not pronounced that way. It's actually pronounced Yahweh. Now, I thought we would uh, look at some other names in the Bible to bring some points out here. Now, I'm not going to be pronouncing the Hebrew on most of these. I'll pronounce maybe a few of them, but I don't want to pronounce the ones I'm not sure how to pronounce. I, I'm not going to pronounce them. But uh, Isaiah, of course, means Yahoo has saved. And as you can see in his name, you have at the end there, you have Yahoo. And then Elijah is pronounced uh, Eliyah or Eliyahu. Now, I don't know why sometimes they have the U and sometimes they do not. I'm not sure about that. And then his name means Yah is God or I, you could say Yahu is God. Now Josiah, he means Yah supports or Yahu supports. And then uh, I included Hallelujah. And of course we all know on Hallelujah you pronounce the J makes a Y sound. We all know that. I mean, that's kind of common knowledge. That no one, no one says Hallelujah. Of course, it means praise you, Yah. So the point of this chart is to make note of how, again, how you can see the J makes a Y sound, and how the fathers, or how the uh, these people, that these uh, particular, uh, you know, Isaiah and Elijah, how. You know, you'll see Yah or sometimes Yahoo in their names. Now, to tie all this together, what we just covered, uh, <clears throat> if you go with, you know, the information that Professor Ben Zion, Netanyahu, uh, shared, how the, the W actually is a B, or the W is a Bob, uh, Yahweh could be spelled like this, Yahweh. Now, Jehovah... You know, we know that it's actually a Y sound, so it would be spelled like this, and you, make, and you would pronounce it Yahweh. And then looking at the Hebrew names that we shared, you know, we saw sometimes the names were Yah, sometimes Yahu. If you combine all that together, all that information together, then it's most likely that you would spell the Father's name as Yahweh. So... When determining the likely spelling of our Heavenly Father's name, it is important to consider the transliteration coupled with the pronunciation, as well as historical evidence. And that's what I did with this. Um, so, I think that it's pretty, uh, pretty clear that that's most likely how our Heavenly Father's name is, is would be pronounced, is the Yahweh. But, uh, let's get our Bibles out because we're going to read in Exodus 3.14 how the, the Father revealed himself to Moses. Now, this is going to be the part in the, the Bible, as we all know, about the, the burning bush experience that Moses had. This is in uh, Exodus 3.14, the Father reveals his name. Now, I'm going to be reading out the King James Version of the Bible. And let's start... We're going to start at uh, 3.13 and we'll end at 3.15. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your, your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they, say, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers 
the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. So right there, well, take note of what it says, the last sentence there in verse 15. And this is my memorial unto all generations. So he's declaring his name here to us. Now, the first on the screen there, you have the Hebrew letters. That's how, if you were to look into the Hebrew Bible, of course, that's what you're going to see. Now, note, notice in the Hebrew letters, it's Aleph, He, Yod, He, as the part that's uh, the part that's the I am part. It looks like a the the Aleph looks like a, a English letter N on your screen, but that is uh, the Aleph. Hey, Yod, Hey. Now, when you translate it over into the English letters, they have there the E H Y E H A S H E R E H Y E H again. And the he in Hebrew tongue, the the Jews would say that the meaning of this actually is I will be what I will, I will be what I will be. And we always we say most of the time, I am that I am, but it basically means the same thing. Now, the pronunciation is what's interesting here. You would pronounce that as Eya, Asher, Eya. And notice how you see the father's name there, Yah. So, it's pretty obvious that I am, and Yah means I am, or I am means Yah. You know, it's pretty obvious that that's the case here. Or as the Jews like to say, I will be. So it's pretty obvious that that's um, our Heavenly Father. I mean, he is, his name is Yah. I am and Yah are the same. Now on the screen now is the uh, Savior's name at the top in the red and the, the Father's name at the bottom in the white. But I just wanted to bring this on the screen just that you can see that the first letter is going from right to left. The first three letters of the Son's name is the same as the Father's name. And that, that, of course, that's the yod Hey vav I just wanted to bring that out and make note of that. But um, let's go into the New Testament and see how Yahushua reveals himself unto his, the people of his day. We're going to start with John 8, uh, 58, where Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. So there he reveals himself as I am. That is why I told you that you would die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am, you'll die in your sins. As it states in John 8, 24. Now in John 14, 8 through 10, Philip said, uh, Lord, Show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? Well, Yahushua has revealed in these three scriptures that he and the Father are one. He represents the Father, as he said to, to Philip, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. What does that mean? Yahushua is the Son of God, or better said, the Son of Yah. I mean, Yahushua, his, his name means Yah is salvation. Or maybe we could say, Yah, I am salvation. Or as the Jews would say, I will be salvation. Hallelujah. I mean, our Creator, the Great I Am, became our salvation. He became our Savior. Glory to His name. Well, that's uh, the end of my teaching on um, the Father's sacred Hebrew name, of, of why, why you find so many names. But um, I want to talk more, though, about... Um, our Savior, you know, he came to this earth. I just want to talk a little bit about his uh, salvation. 
You know, he came to this earth and took on the likeness of man. So he, you know, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. You know, even the death of the cross for you and me. He himself bore our sins in his own body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. And he did this because of his great love for us. That was his reason for, for coming to this earth, because of his great love for us. But the question is, have we returned his love? Are we living for him, <clears throat> or are we living for ourselves? So that's what I want to talk about today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Are we living for him, or are we living for ourselves? You know, he has commanded all who desire to be his disciple, disciple, that we must deny or, deny ourselves and take up our cross. You know, and follow after him daily. No, you know, not just one time. We need to be followers of, of him daily. We need to come to the cross daily. For whoever, for it says in Matthew 16, 25, for whoever will lose their life for his sake will find it. However, those who cling to their life will lose it. Now, Paul tells us in uh, Philippians 2, 12, that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, we have a part to play because our very soul is at stake. 1 Peter 1, 16 states, be holy because I am holy. So we, we have a part to play. We have to, to be obedient unto him. You know, after we receive his salvation, we need to walk in obedience to him in order to stay in his love. For Yehushua stated, or Jesus stated in John 14, 15. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. You know, we, we prove our love by keeping his commandments. You know, and that, that is working out that is working out our, our salvation with fear and trembling, in my opinion. Working out your, your salvation with fear and trembling is about obeying his commandments. <clears throat> Or are you going to believe the lie of Satan that says, once saved, always saved? That's a lie from the pit of hell. Now, Yahushua, or you know, Jesus, shares in the book of uh, Revelation in verse 316, um, his judgment on those who are lukewarm, Christians. And that's really what we're talking about here. When the information I'm, you know, I'm sharing right now is, it's about, you know, to are you a lukewarm Christian? And this is what he says in in Revelations three sixteen. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. That's that's a very powerful uh, um, scripture. Now, do you think after lukewarm Christians are spewed out of the mouth of our Savior that heaven will be then be your home? Wake up. Your soul is at stake here. Now, um, Yahushua loves you. Now, he does not want you to go to hell. He wants you to turn back to him with all your heart. He weeps. He weeps for your lost soul. Come back to the cross. Come back to your first love. Come back to the lover of your soul. His arms are open to receive you. Will you open your heart again to him? Will you? Now, on your screen, as you can see there, um, you see it's a this is a prophetic uh, painting that uh, a lady named Nancy did. And anyways, in this painting... You see, Yahushua is praying, but what you can't really see is he's got—he's actually is uh, 
has tears. Now in the the uh, bigger picture, um, the enlarged picture of, of, of Yahushua, you can if you can almost make out he does have tears coming down his eyes. Now you ask yourself, why is he crying? Why is he weeping? He's he's praying. And it says here, his tears are coming down his face, for he weeps for those that will be left behind. The ones he grieves the most for are those that think they are on their way on their way to heaven and instead will be left behind and go to hell. For they have a religion, not a relationship with Almighty God, Yahweh and Yahushua. Those that think they live unholy, that think they can live unholy, and see how close to hell they can live and still make heaven, he weeps for. They have been deceived. It is a deception. Is he weeping for you? Is our Savior weeping for you? Do you think that you're right with him and you're really not? Now, I myself was a, a lukewarm Christian, but I don't want to be a lukewarm Christian anymore. I'm determined to live my life to the honor and glory of his name. Now, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this teaching today. It's because I want to help others who are living their life and they're thinking they're right with God and that they're on their way to heaven. And maybe you're not. And all what, what has really helped me the most in this commitment and uh, is the ministry of Almighty Win. Uh, Almighty Win Ministry um, preaches and teaches the truth of Almighty God, Yahweh, that is able to save your soul. Now, at the Almighty Win uh, website are holy prophecies that, that you can read and truly come to know the heart of your Heavenly Father. The Father shares with His people how they can prepare for His soon return. Now, we all want to be prepared for His soon return. We all want to get our lives right. Those who uh, desire, you know, we want to get our, our lives right with Him. Now, I'm going to read an, you an excerpt from Prophecy 13 that you can find at Almighty Wind Ministries, Almighty Wind website. And the title of this uh, prophecy is, Tell Them My Child, Tell Them For Me. Now, this was given to Reverend Sherry Elijah on January 24th, 1998. And this is what Yahushua has shared concerning lukewarm Christians. This is what he says. Although I rejoice at coming to take my children out of this wicked world, to carry my bride home in my arms, I weep and I sob, for I am torn in half. So many will be left. So many that call themselves mine, and yet my spirit is not in them. They will be left to suffer the wrath of Almighty God, Yahweh. Tell them, my daughter, tell them for me. Warn them. Many will listen and obey this prophecy. I weep for the churches that are overflowing, and people stand in line to get in the churches. Yet my Ruach HaKadosh, my Holy Spirit, is not in these churches. These people call themselves mine, and they don't know me. They are the church of the pretenders. Tell them, my child, tell them for me. They will be left to suffer the wrath of Almighty God Yahweh if they don't repent. What a tragedy. Having faith in me is the key to their destiny. But it's not enough to just believe who I am. My children must obey, love, serve the great God Yahweh I am. Tell them, my child, though many will not listen, tell them for me, heaven or hell is for eternity. Tell them, my children, tell them for me, you have been warned this day, what will it be? Will I say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter in? Or will I say, depart from me, you worker of evil and sin? The Ruach HaKadosh of Father Yahweh you never had within. You have served the God of this world and sin. Now you have served, you who have served Satan, you will suffer forever with him. Tell them, my children, tell them for me, 
Yahushua HaMashiach is coming quickly. Tell them, my child, tell them for me. So Yahushua shares his heart there um, to help us understand how, that lukewarm Christians are not going to make it to heaven. So I invite you to come back to him. Come back to the cross. Come back to your Savior. Rededicate your life to him. I have a, a salvation prayer below this video. I, um, you can go there and you, you can read it and you can cry out to him today. Please do that. Please, please get your life right with him. He loves you so much. Um, this teaching, um, you know, this is over, over but um, I have a, a, a little uh, beautiful song after this. I would like you to, to, to please stay on it and listen to the song. It's a really pretty song. So I just bless each and every person in the mighty name of Yehoshua. And uh, bless you. Bye.